All right. Now that you know how to do your WAV file management and install your message player and move the WAV files into the machine to be played, now we have to figure out how do we actually trigger these messages. You know how to actually manually go in there on your PC and trigger a message to play manually, but more often than not, messages need to be either scheduled, which is another tutorial video with the event scheduler. Please look for that. And also to be triggered through external dry contacts or TTL logic, such as your fire alarm panel, your security panel. Maybe you got timer clocks out there if you don't want to use the event scheduler, you know, or you have manual evac buttons, chemical spill buttons, or what have you. Or motion detectors, say in a retail that somebody needs help, and when they're in a certain area, they could either trip a motion detector or hit a manual button to trigger a message saying, hey, assistance is needed in the electrical section or in the woodcutting section. The world's your oyster, use your imagination. So let's go ahead and set up an event, and let's just say we want our SOS message to be triggered whenever we get a contact closure on our control input number one. First thing I want to do is go open up my uh, message player. Well, actually, strike that because I can't do anything while I'm connected, so I need to disconnect. Now we're disconnected, so now I can go in there and set up my event schedule. We're going to add an event, and we'll give it a name, and we'll say SOS message and I'll just put trigger just for fun. All right, and here's the control type because I'm in the message player. The only control type I get is actually to play a message. I will show you through another way that we could do this that will actually have all kinds of presets or whatever as well. Now, there's a couple of ways you can handle any kind of message play. Now, remember, this is channel one or two, and that corresponds with M1 or M2, the output channels, and this is how I can route messages to go through different channels. So I'll just say one for now. I can say how many times when I get that trigger I want that message to repeat. So I'm just going to say I just want it to play once which means I don't want it to repeat again. If you say repeat once obviously it's going to play the message twice. There is another way to do this which I will go ahead and check. It's called forever. Which means is it'll actually repeat 255 times which to us is forever because that's a lot of times to repeat a message. But what that means is that it will keep playing that message forever and ever and ever until it is told to stop. This is an extremely important thing to understand because if you are going to have a message repeat forever, you have to add a second event which is called a stop event. And I will show you how to do that here in a second. Now the assigned is this is where you actually assign the message to be played whenever this event is triggered. And we haven't said how this event's going to be triggered. We're just saying, hey, event number one, this is the name. This is what's going to happen. And so we're going to say, I'm going to look on my UAP, and I'm going to search, and there's my SOS. And I'll say, okay, put that in. And I will search. I'll add it. And there you go. It's on the event, ready to go. So there, event number one, SOS, everything's ready to go, we're fine. Then you look up here and see my assign turned to one. I can actually go look at it, and that's the file name that it's set there, ready to go. Now, if I just wanted this to repeat once, that's all I needed to do. So whenever you got a momentary contact or whatever on trigger one, it would play that message. If we wanted to say it's a fire alarm message, and I want it to repeat constantly until the fire alarm is cleared, I will say forever. Since we have this set up for forever, what we'll need to do is we need to add another event. And the event needs to be a stop event because it will play. Even if we bump it and release it, it will keep playing that message forever. I will get out of my, or my message player and let's go over here to view. And we'll go down here to our event management. Uh, the people program in UAPs, you will spend a lot of time in event management. As you will see, this is the way you map control inputs to do any number of things, whether it's presets, your selector switch changes, or anything like that that's done through external contacts or analog controls. This is where you set these up for your event. I've already got an event programmed in here, and I can see that's just a message play event. I'm not doing this through third-party control, but here's my logic in high, and here's my logic in low. This is where I set the numbers, so all my TTL logic control inputs will be shown in these windows and this is where I map it. So if I say I want to go to control one, I need to make sure control input number one is actually set up for TTL logic. We do that by going to our system tab and right clicking on the DSP block and go to external select. Now by default, the first eight of the 16 input channels are going to be set to TTL logic in, which are your triggers and you can actually set them up for normally open or normally close. 
And your second 8 or 9 through 16 are going to be set for analog in, where you put your RAC analog remotes, or you can use any kind of 10K pot, you know, analog ver varistor type of uh, remotes as well. And then here's your outputs that you could set up for normally open or normally close for your 8 control outputs. One important note, if you change the configuration of these, no big deal, but the key is the TTL logics have to be first. So if you want four TTL logic inputs, make sure they're channels one through four, and then I can make these other four right here analog if I want. But that's one extremely important aspect that you need to know. You can't mess up because it won't even show up when you do the event, and we will go to that now. Let's go in here. We're going to View, Event Management, and now what I'm going to say is I want this SOS message to trigger, and I want it to trigger when... Logic input C, here's the only four, because I said only the first four are logic, and five through 16 are now analog. They don't even show up here as logic and triggers. So I'm going to say, okay, channel one. And I select it. There we go. Now, when logic input number one goes low, or the impedance goes low, and you get a contact closure, I'm actually going to play this message. And I can even look at the mount if I want, because I can set this up, but that's the message that it's actually routed to. I could change the message here if I want. Now, Remember, it is going to play continuously because I said in the message player, when this event goes off, I want this message to play forever. So what happens when the contact for control input number one is released or opened back up? Well, then we need to tell it, hey, when this happens, stop playing the message. We do that by actually adding another event, say, stop SOS message. And now you can see the control type. I have several options. I could change master presets, sub presets, an element adjust like a selector switch or what have you. Um, I could actually say when this happens, do a control output device. So I could simultaneously do things like unlock doors, you know, turn off strobes, turn on strobes, you know, lights, beacons, what have you. Or one of the options is called a stop event. And the stop event is made to be for anything that's continuous or repeating to stop the event uh, when that happens. So when that actually happens, now we have the logic in high and logic in low. And what I'm saying is, okay, the logic in high, I want that to be channel 1. So now what we look at, when channel 1 goes low or we get a contact closure, I'm going to play this message. And remember, we set it up to play forever. And then when it goes back high or the contact is released, I want to stop this event. And i got to tell it which event I want to stop. And this is the one because this is the only message play I've got in there. I select that one and I save it. And now we're ready to go. Now, as always, we go and compile. There you go. And we go to store this into the machine. All right. Yes, we will enable audio and I will close this out. Now, what I will do is I will just open up this right here so we can see it. I will leave my cursor right here so you can see what's going on and we should get some output right here on channel one. So I've actually got a pair of wires over here on my UAP and they are connected to my control input number one. I am going to short the wires here and I will keep them shorted so the message will actually play twice and then during the second message I will release the contact closures and it should go away. So I'm going to short them in three, two, one. Here we go. We're playing the message. We're still in the first message. Still shorted. All right. And this is the end of the first message. Still shorted. All right. Now we're repeating. Now I'm going to release the contact closures in three, two, one. And it stopped the message play. That's how easy it is. There you go. If you have any questions on setting up your message player or your WAV file music management, please feel free to visit our website at www.penton-usa.com. Also, please make sure you check out our other tutorial videos on the UAP G2 as well as the event scheduling, which takes this a step further and shows you how you can set up messages to be scheduled so they're like a message repeater playing at certain intervals or at certain times of the day. Thank you, and have a terrific day.